I just want to do an update on uh, a couple of my chainsaws. Um, I'm sort of into chainsaws, even though I don't use them professionally. But first, I'm drinking Australian beer, Stubby. Yeah, that's what it's called, Stubby. And very nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a little more, almost craft beerish. Very nice. So, this is the first saw that I ever had. And I've had it for about 15 years. About 15 years, since about 2005, 2006, maybe. Or 2006. Yeah. So, quite a while. And uh, it's never failed me. Um, I've never had a problem with it. It's always run. Um, I've, I've had the bar with an S-band in it and, and did damage uh, the body a little bit, but it still goes really, really good. Um, the only thing that I've ever changed on it is the chain, you know, with, because they wear out. And the bar I had to change for the because I've got it stuck and put an S-bend in it. But what I've done today, because it's draining, um, I've put, as you can see, that's the original cover. So i put a bar that's that much longer on it. So I've put a silver streak. Yeah, because it, silver streak, because silver streak goes faster. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. so it, you'll see that it is a bit, uh, I don't know, that's not too bad. It's hanging down before. Yeah, and once you don't cut yourself and do that. But, um, a little bit too loose. Uh, yeah. But, um, so I put a new, new, new chain, a new bar on it, a longer bar. Uh, the reason I put a longer bar on it is for reach, just so you're not having to. Instead of going, uh, instead of going, or instead of going, uh, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, you shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't be doing anything over your head. But hey, I'm not going to hire a, uh, you know, an EWP elevated work platform just, yeah, you know, just to cut a few branches off a tree. Sorry, um, I'm going to do it the the bad way, the wrong way, and get my hands up there but if you've got a longer bar you, you got the closer that your arms your elbows are to your body the more control you've got it's quite literally the truth so if you've got something out here you, you, that box boom yeah not good um fantastic little chainsaw it's the Shindaiwa 352 s professional uh, and it was used by professionals i know that um the local council um they used to use them. I don't know what they use now. Uh, <clears throat> so I've, I've never, and nothing's ever broken on it. All that I've ever replaced really was spark plug, chain, bar, the things that wear out. Other than that, it's a fantastic little saw. The only reason I had to use it the other day was because I got my big saw stuck. Yes, I know. But uh, what the pros reckon is that if you haven't had a chainsaw stuck, you haven't done much chainsawing. Man, yeah, everybody does. You know. Now, this really the saw that I really wanted to talk about was this one, which is which is a bit of a beast now. Which is so this is essentially an update on uh, how the Balnarag 72cc chainsaw is going. Um, these are really cheap compared to what it's copied off, which is the Husqvarna 352. It, it's a copy of a Husqvarna 352. Um, a hell of a lot cheaper than a Husqvarna, I can tell you that much. And pretty much exactly the same. Um, so I bought this probably about 18 months ago, I think. And uh, so I did some research as to because I wanted to get a bigger saw. The 352S is fine, but I needed a, needed a bigger saw. And um, I was doing a bit of research. And uh, so I found out what its failings were. Now, in the 18 months that I've had it, I haven't used it a whole lot. 
but the fact is that I had this sitting around for about a year and I only picked it up a couple of days ago when I had to clear a, 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 bit, a huge mango tree that had fallen over into my yard from the next door neighbours because the guy who's supposed to get, you know, take it away, cut it up and take it away, hasn't done it yet and it's been way too long, like it's been a few weeks. So I just got sick of looking at it. So I just chopped it up and threw it back over her fence. Um, she's not the owner, she's just the occupant. So um, the contractor who was supposed to do it, I actually know him personally. He's a great guy, he's flat out. So yeah, he's busy. Uh, and it doesn't really bother me. But I did get sick of looking at it, and it gave me a chance to put this thing through its paces after quite a while, after quite a break. Uh, man, that bird is shitting me. There's some little young bird whinging to its parents that it wants food. I don't know if you can hear that. So anyway, it's, right, it's pissed down rain, so I, I thought I'd do this video. Um, it's been raining all day. Um, so it's a copy of the Husqvarna 352. It's supposed to be a 72cc. My understanding is it's more like 59cc. Um, I, I don't know. I had, haven't had the opportunity to measure the displacement, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but when I was doing the research on it, so I bought it. And I, after I'd done the research, there was a couple of things that I definitely wanted to replace, or three things that I definitely wanted to replace, which I did pretty much straight up, or, you know, I think pretty much straight up. The first thing is that the, the cover, that's a Husqvarna. The reason why it's orange is because it's a Husqvarna cover. And the ta chain tensioning system that moves the bar in and out on the original Husqvarna is a much better uh, setup than the than the Baumarag uh, chain tensioner. It's pretty crap. Um, the reason being that, um, like, it looks like the thread is, it, like, it's cast. Like, the, the, the screw, the screw is cast, and, like, the thread is, it's not even an even pitch. It's really, yeah, it's really poorly done. A, a serious failing of it. So, I just, and instead of just buying a whole new, instead of just buying new tensioner, because then you've got to do some modifications to the old panel, uh, old cover, and that, I just bought a whole new Husqvarna cover, which is cost bugger all, really didn't cost much at all. So, number one, Husqvarna cover. Number two, a Husqvarna wraparound handle. This is what the professionals use, a wraparound handle, because then you can hold it any which way you want. Um, with the old handles, you're limited to what you can do. Um, twin Husqvarna dogs, all right? Twin Husqvarna dogs. Um, they're, compared to the dog that, with the other one, I think you only get a single dog, if I remember rightly. And, uh, well, you might get twin dogs, but they're, they're really thin and just crap steel, just mild steel that just bend. These are these are a much better quality steel, uh, much thicker and yeah, sturdier, bigger, beefier. Um, now, what did I? So that's what I replaced when I first got it. What did I have to replace? So I didn't have to do those replacements. Uh, more beer. What I did have to replace was oh, man. Um, one of these, I can't remember if it was the fuel or the oil. I can't remember which one's original and which one, which one's OEM and which one's, well, which one's a Husqvarna OEM and which one's the original. But one of them leaked. I remember that, one of them leaked. And uh, the reason why it leaked is because the actual, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. In actual fact, I don't know why it leaked because I thought it might've been because the, the, the actual thread is, is a part of the cast. It's cast, a part of the casting. And if it's not perfectly cast, then the thread will be crap. But if, if that was what the problem was, then changing the cap wouldn't do anything because it was the casting. If it was the casting that's a problem, that's the problem. But when I changed the cap uh, for a proper Husqvarna cap, that leak stopped. 
So that leads me to believe that it was actually the cap. That's the only thing I really had to replace. I didn't have to. I could have just put up with it leaking, but you know, that's a pain in the ass. So what did I do today? Um, so the other day I, I knocked down that mango tree. That was like a day and a half of work. You know. um, so that's that's the original bar length, 24 inches, and I put a bigger uh, bar on it. Uh, the you see that? It's Sumura. Yeah. Um, so and. The chain that I put on it is a skip chain. So, why did I put a bigger bar on it? Just reach, and this thing's got so much grunt that it can definitely handle it. Um, so you can do you know, bigger trees uh, with a bigger girth. Um, and I put a skip chain. So, skip chains are more efficient. Um, they're supposed to be a bit more dangerous with regards to you know, kicking back. But they are more efficient and the pros use them. Um, that's why you can buy them. The other thing that I upgrade today, so I upgraded the bar and chain and I upgraded the muffler. That is a very, very popular, uh, a very popular modification that a lot of guys do is that they actually just drill more holes in it just to give it more air. Um, so this is a proper job. Not a not a half-assed job. This has got the uh, the spark screens, so it's actually got some. Uh, it's actually legal uh, because if you've got a muffler that, that has no spark screens, you're not allowed to use it in certain areas because you'd start fires. Yeah, you don't want to do that here in Australia. Uh, yeah, you go to jail. Well, anyway. Um, so that's two upgrades that I did today. Um, how much different does it sound than before? I reckon it sounds a bit, I don't know, maybe a little bit tinnier. It doesn't sound louder. I don't reckon it sounds louder. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a decibel meter, so I couldn't tell you, but yeah. not a problem. So, um, one thing, yeah, the, the Baumarag 72cc is a great chainsaw. I've never had a problem with it. There was that leaky cap that I replaced with with a with a Husqvarna one. Every all the other upgrades that I've done to it are totally unnecessary. Uh, they're just things that I wanted to do to it. Um, so after picking it up, after you know not using it for about a year, it started pretty much like you know three pulls, normal two stroke. Yeah. Not a problem. Stale fuel and all. It didn't bother it at all. Uh, they are a great saw. Um, I, I do recommend them. Um, you never know. You might get a dud. Uh, I have seen where people, some people, have had problems with them, like the the handles, uh, the this 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 spring locators and that, uh, not not positioned in the right place, and I don't know. Um, yeah, I've not had any problem with it. It does it does say to use um, 25 to 1 ratio fuel. Yeah, that's way too rich. Like, that's really, really rich. Uh, I wouldn't use anything... I wouldn't use anything richer than 35 to 1, actually. And I... I for all my two-stroke equipment, I use 40 to 1. And, like... So I've been using... 40 to 1 in this thing for 15 years and never had, or more than 15 years, never had a problem with it, all right? I've been using 40 to 1 through this, haven't had a problem with it, you know? Um, uh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stall, it doesn't sputter, it doesn't, I've never had a problem with it, so I just use 40 to 1. Um, one thing that I would advise anyone who is thinking of buying a chainsaw for the first time is either get some instruction from someone who knows how to use a chainsaw properly, like a professional, someone who's actually done a course, or just go and do the course. It's not very expensive and you're going to learn a lot. 
Um, I've done um, a course which I did through the local council when uh, we had a very, very large cyclone, which you call hurricanes in the United States. We had that come through and knocked a lot of big trees down, a lot. And uh, I was in between jobs, I had a clean up crew. And um, yeah, I uh, did that course and I learnt a hell of a lot. Also, WorkSafe BC, they have um, on YouTube, you can watch their whole, uh, I don't know, lumberjack course or whatever it is, I don't know, tree felling, it's, it's got about 15 modules and they're, they're hours long, so uh, you can really learn a lot from that. A um, couple of websites, or a couple of them. Um, actually, one YouTube channel in particular is uh, Guilty of Trees On, T-R-E-E-S-O-N. Uh, great bunch of guys, they really show a lot of different techniques. Uh, Buck and Billy Ray Smith is a great channel, uh, but just go and do a course because you're going to learn how to take care of the chainsaw and you're also going to learn how to not hurt yourself which is a very big one because I do personally know a guy that really did himself damage um, like can't lift his arm up can't lift his right arm up uh, yeah so that's not good and that was from a chainsaw um, now he may not have been doing the wrong thing but he ended up a cripple you know for the rest of his life, so that's not good. Uh, just, just go and do the course. Just, you won't, you're going to learn a lot. If you've never actually used a chainsaw and, and you go out and buy, but that's it. That's the thing about chainsaws is that anyone can go out and buy one, and a really big one, a really dangerous one, and you can, uh, if you do the wrong thing, uh, you can really, really, really hurt yourself. And um, but not necessarily from the chainsaw, but from a tree, because uh, if if you're not fully aware of what happens when you cut here, what what the tree's going to do when you cut here, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people who've died or been really hurt from yeah just misreading about how how to cut the tree, you know, and. You, I don't know if, it, if it's even illegal to fell trees if you've never done a course, I don't know. Um, you can certainly buy the chainsaws, you know. So, go and do the course. So I just want to do an update on this. It's a fantastic saw. I did have, you know what, I did have some footage of the tree that I bucked, that big mango, and I just deleted it. <laughs> oh man, not having a good day that way. Um, but, so this thing doesn't, it doesn't leak, um, you know, not, well, some saws you, you, just, you, put, you pick up after a while and there's just this oily mess under it, um, there's, yeah, dry as, um, it doesn't leak, um, I've never had a problem with it, so if you're thinking about getting a Balmerag, 72cc, go for it. Um, the the improvements that I've done to it, or I don't know about improvements. Well, yeah, they are improvements. Um, have added a bit of a fair bit of weight to it, so just be aware of that. When you put bigger things on a chainsaw, it does get heavier. But uh, yeah, I knew that straight away. So I actually can't wait for it to stop raining so I can get back to using this because I've got a hell of a lot of trees. I'm going to cut down at least three in my backyard and some of them, a couple of them are pretty big um, so that's going to be interesting so that's one, another reason why I got the bigger bar and the skip chain and the hot dog uh, muffler it's not a hot dog muffler but yeah so mm, I, you know what I, <laughs> I do actually have a big ball kit for this but um I, I'm not, I'm not going to put, I don't want to put this out of commission at the moment because, um, because I need to use it, although it's, it is raining, so, but I will, um, at some stage I will install the big ball kit that'll, yeah, really make it run, but when I do that I'll, I'll change the bearings and, and everything I think, put really good quality bearings in it and that, 
So anyway, that's the um, update on the Balmerag 72cc, great saw, don't hesitate in getting one, um, at least the one that I got is really really good, so until next time, see you later.